Let's bring in Hollywood divorce attorney David Glass for more on this. David, people going through divorces are going through some of the hardest times of their lives, and a lot of what they're going through is emotional. And in any divorce, there's a huge sense of loss, and the loss of relationship, of money, some friends. We're back with the Hourglass Podcast, where family law and psychology intersect. I'm your host, David Glass, a certified family law specialist, former psychologist, and the author of Moving On, Redesigning Your Emotional, Financial, and Social Life After Divorce. Today, we continue our mission to do all we can to help those going through a breakup or divorce find ways to make the trauma of it all a little bit easier, more understandable, smoother, and to help them find motivation and inspiration to move on. How? By continuing to share advice and insights from a variety of experts, specialists who are regarded as the best in their respective fields. We're gonna to continue to explore topics that plague many of those going through a breakup. On our next few podcasts, we'll focus on topics where the individual is left to feel or be victimized by abuse. Today, we're gonna to start with a form of psychological abuse, gaslighting. We're gonna take a look at what gaslighting actually is, the profile of a gaslighter, and how to spot the signs that someone is gaslighting you. Before we start, I'd like to give you a quick explanation. In a nutshell, gaslighting is a tricky, undercover mind game kind of abuse, where your ex manipulates your thinking and does so in a number of subtle ways. His or her methods are most often covert. In what ways? Let me give you a few examples. He or she makes you question your fact-based decisions. They get you to question the interpretation of things they have said or done to you. They get you to question your prior perception of reality. They get you to question your self-worth. And if they're really good at it, they make you question your sanity. It is when a person plays such havoc with your mind that over time, you doubt everything and everyone. A gaslighter's key goal is to undermine you in pretty much every way. Eventually, if you're left to feel less than and guilty for what's gone wrong in the relationship, that the breakup is all your fault, you know that you're being or have been gaslit. For you, maybe this kind of sneaky abuse has gone on for years, maybe for only a short time, like ever since you started to wind down the relationship. Or maybe it started with the advent of the breakup, or even from the very beginning of the relationship. A gaslighter will say things like, I never said that, you just took it that way. Or they may say, I'm a bit concerned about how you keep losing your car keys. Oh, here's a popular one. You're being way too sensitive. Or, shouldn't you take a closer look at why I cheated on you? Here's another popular one. You're being a little overdramatic, don't you think? Or, you've been confused a lot lately, what's wrong with you? And one of the all-time greats from a gaslighter. That's not reality, that's just your imagination again. And the list goes on. Bottom line, those who gaslight others are out for one thing, control. They want power over the other person. Your ex throwing you off balance and making you question yourself is a big win for that person. Another tip off, there are a couple of typical behaviors in a gaslighter's communication style. They include sarcasm and a condescending stance. Can you identify? If so, Stay tuned. Now, occasionally I lay out a pop quiz for you. Today is no exception. Answer these questions below with yes or no. Number one, do you feel like you're walking on eggshells? Number two, in thinking about the demise of your relationship, do you find yourself confused, dazed? Number three, does your ex minimize your concerns and complaints? Number four, do you dread conversations or encounters with your ex? Number five, do you heavily value your ex's opinion of you rather than your own? Number six, have you come to distrust others around you? Number seven, are you constantly self-protective or guarded? Number eight, do you question your fact-based reality? Number nine, do you feel helpless and hopeless? And number 10, do you feel bad about yourself without knowing why? If you've answered yes to any of these questions, know that you may have been the victim of gaslighting. 
Let's talk to today's guest and all about this. Before we do, one more thing for clarification. You might wonder if a person who gaslights is a narcissist. Well, gaslighting is a form of narcissistic abuse and we'll delve deeper into narcissism on another day. But for now, let's focus on the anatomy of gaslighting. Today, we have licensed marriage and family therapist, Christina Lindsay Ibarra, who helps couples and individuals with their relationship issues, gaslighting chief among them. She helps those who are victims of it regain their self-esteem. Those clients who are gaslighters, well, she strives to steer them in a different direction. Now, Christina, I've talked to our audience already about gaslighting. I gave them a quick overview of what it is and the signs that indicate they have or have not been gaslit. But can you give us a profile of a gaslighter? A gaslighter, in the, for the purpose of this conversation, we're going to refer to someone, I'm assuming, that is using it on a persistent basis with the intention to break down someone's sense of self and their reality. Um, Someone who's doing this on a persistent basis that you're facing um, in a conversation is doing this to do harm, right? And to have control and to mani manipulate. So it's really hard to come up with a specific profile because people do this for so many reasons. But the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway for people listening today would be if you are feeling someone is trying to manipulate or dominate your reality, Right. injecting their reality into yours, that's a sign you're being gaslit and that's when you need to seek help. Okay. Is there, are there any dead giveaways that someone is gaslighting you? Dead giveaways. Um, again, it's, it's a very specific and nuanced term gaslighting. And I'm so glad you're doing this because, right. you know, so often with, uh, destigmatizing therapy and, um, access to social media, people are learning a lot about these psychological terms right. and they're getting used in very broad ways. And gaslighting itself is very specific and nuanced. Someone mm -hmm. is intentionally doing this to manipulate and to have control over you and your reality. So um, when you are feeling that you are second guessing yourself constantly, that you're feeling that everything you're saying is wrong. You're feeling insecure in conversations with these people. You're feeling belittled, um, devalued, dismissed, mm -hmm. and not allowed to have your own experience. You're being gaslit. And um, that is one I would always say to seek professional help because, uh, again, a very specific term and a lot of people can come in and have um, different perceptions in an argument. Um, because someone's saying that's not what happened, this is what happened, does not necessarily mean you're being gaslit, right? Two people can get into a perception battle. Sure. This happens so much, and I counsel through a lot of that. Doesn't mean someone's necessarily gaslighting, because they're not doing this with the intention to do harm to you. They just truly had a different experience. Um, so in the world of gaslighting, when you're suspecting you're being gaslit, the person in front of you is intentionally trying to break down how you're seeing or experiencing something and inject their version, their narrative. Right. So that is, that is probably the biggest indicator, right? You have someone that's um, unwilling to take any accountability. They are not willing to apologize because why would they? And you're finding that they are pretty much injecting their narrative into your story and making you second guess your own. Right, and so that's why going to see a therapist, getting an objective outside voice right. to tell you, uh, are you going crazy? Are you thinking, uh, are you doubting yourself for any right. good reason? Or is this being injected into you and using your term? Exactly, so we, I want uh, just to caution people to be careful with that term and the labeling of a gaslighter, right? These are psychological terms that can be misused and can do harm by doing that. And right. it's entered our lexicon now, obviously being the 2022 word of the year, right? Right. Um, so a lot of people are curious about this, but I would just caution everyone that if you suspect this is happening to you, to seek outside help. Find someone who's trained to help, whether it's a therapist, a school counselor, counseling provided through your employer. Mm -hmm. uh, find someone, and if you don't have access to that, find someone who you really trust to talk to about what you're experiencing to get help. Okay, and so, uh, so you, you suspect you're, someone is gaslighting you. Mm -hmm. You go and, and you meet with a therapist or a counselor mm -hmm. 
and you're able to work out that you are being gaslit. Sure. Is there any way to communicate effectively with a gaslighter, uh, uh, or is it just a, a losing argument? It really depends on the dynamic of the person you're dealing with, right? Um, a lot of times people who are using this to intentionally do psychological harm, right? Um, this is emotional abuse, they're abusers. So first and foremost, if you're facing someone like that in a conversation, I would want to uh, advise that person to make sure they're safe, right? right. Um, a lot of these uh, individuals using this tool can be violent, right? Maybe there's domestic violence or um, risk of physical harm. So if that's happening and you're in that kind of dynamic with someone where you're like, oh, okay, here we are, I'm being gaslit. Um, can you safely advocate for yourself and, and have a right. conversation or not? Sometimes you may have to just diffuse the situation, deescalate it and find a way to get out of the conversation safely. Um, for some people, that's not an option. If they leave the conversation and not engage in it, they could get hurt. Right. Um, so sometimes it's, it's really uh, a hard thing to give a cookie cutter answer because it's right. very specific. Now, if you're dealing with someone where the power dynamic isn't that far off and you feel safe, um, you can stand in your truth um, and not engage in it and just say, I know what happened to me. I know what I experienced. This is my truth. Um, I'm not going to debate that. And uh, there are a lot of things you can say, some catchphrases, they're all over mm -hmm. social media right now, right. of responses you can give to stand in your truth respectfully. Um, and ultimately, you may have to walk away from the conversation because a lot of times, no matter what you say, this person is really going to double down or even triple down on creating this chaos in the conversation. Right. So there's not going to be a resolve. So don't take the bait is one mm -hmm. of the things I tell my clients quite often. Don't take the bait. Don't sit there and defend yourself. That is exactly what the person who's using that tool is hoping for. Good. So Christina, what does gaslighting look like? When you're facing someone who's using gaslighting, they are going to be questioning your reality um, and injecting doubt into your experience. Um, for example, uh, if you were pushed by this person for some reason and you said, oh my gosh, that hurt, you pushed me. And they'd look you straight in the eye and say, I didn't push you, you right. fell. And you're like, did I? I thought you, but no, I didn't push you. What are you talking about? Now you're just being crazy. You fell down, you're such a klutz, you're always falling, right? That's a really good example of gaslighting where mm -hmm. someone's coming in, you know what happened to you and yet they're facing you head on, denying it, possibly flat out lying. Um, you can have other situations also where it's a little more insidious and it's, it's more covert, right? The subtle little things they do, like mm -hmm. passing a joke off at your expense in front of people to make you look small. And when you address it with them later, what are you talking about? I wasn't trying to embarrass you. We were just telling a joke. You're being so sensitive. Stop being so sensitive. That's a really common phrase, mm -hmm. right? Now, by the way, just because someone says these things doesn't mean they're necessarily sure. gaslighting. But in a situation where someone really wants you to doubt yourself and your experience um, over and over again, they're going to be doing all these little tiny things that break you down and how you see yourself and the world around you, right? And that can look like any number of things to, why didn't you put gas in the car? I told you to put gas in the car. You didn't tell me to put gas in the right. car. No. It's just this back and forth thing of where you know you had a conversation with someone and yet they're looking you straight in the eye and telling you the opposite, right? This is the step, it becomes word salad, right? And there's never gonna be a resolution or any accountability over here. Yeah, so they are not willing sorry. to, ex I'm so sorry, mm. they are not willing in any way to accept your experience. It's theirs and that's all that matters, right? So it sounds like it starts, maybe it usually starts with an outright denial, and then the person who's engaging in gaslighting mm -hmm. then tries to weave in other things from your life. This is the way you always are, and remember this is the way you were with your sister, and, and to try and build their case. Yeah, and you can even get gaslit in their apologies. If they do apologize, mm -hmm. it'll be, well, I'm sorry I lied to you, but I had to because you would get completely crazy if I told you the truth. All right. Right? It's your fault, always. It's being passed off on you. You're the problem, you're the issue. Hey, I'm fine. 
I'm the chill person. You're the one with the problem. You always have a problem. Nothing's ever good enough for you. It's these little, little tiny phrases that just mm. over time break down how you see yourself. Right. And so it may seem like a far out question, but does it ever make sense to try and gaslight a gaslighter? Uh, I understand why people would want to do All that right. because especially when you realize, oh my gosh, I've been getting gaslit this whole time. I thought there was something wrong with me and I'm actually being gaslit. People get angry and they do feel in that anger like they want to retaliate. Mm -hmm. It's a no-win battle. First of all, now you're reducing yourself to also doing something that's emotionally and psychologically abusive. Why would you want to do that? Right. Um, and secondly, you're winning. I try to explain this to my clients a lot. When someone is using this tool, it's because they're digging into their toolbox because they think you're winning. They think you have the upper hand. And for them, it's all about having power in right. that conversation. So if you don't engage with it and just stand in your truth and either leave the conversation or just stay strong in your position, mm -hmm. you are winning. You're losing when you start defending. Right. So. And to gaslight them back, it's impossible. It will just become word salad. They will dig deeper and deeper and deeper. And you'll feel like you just got on a train you don't want to go down right. completely. As a divorce lawyer, I often counsel my clients who are separated, mm -hmm. either going through divorce or recently divorced. I say it's opposite of how they sell the lottery. They, they, yeah. they say the only way to win is to play. Right. I tell my clients the only way to win is not to play no. with one of these people. Absolutely not, because they will go to any extreme uh, from straight up lying, denial. They will just dig in further and further. Yeah. And again, to try to gaslight them brings you into that world of also being emotionally abusive. And I wouldn't want that for anyone. Sure. So. Is, is gaslighting becoming an epidemic in today's re relationships, or is it just that people are talking more about it and it's still a relatively rare thing? Yeah, I think that's a good question because like I said before, people get in perception battles a lot. I see this a lot with couples. They'll come sit on the couch and you did this, nope, you did that, and I hear this back and forth. Yeah. And now with the term gaslighting out there, people are, oh, I'm being gaslit. They're trying to deny my dream. No, that's not actually what's happening. Right. What's happening is you're getting caught in a perception battle. And I find that is more often what's happening mm -hmm. than someone. There have been cases where I've seen extreme gaslighting, for sure. But most of the time, what's happening is people are having a hard time getting outside of their little bubble and experiencing what the other person is, or at least trying to understand what the other person is experiencing. Yeah. And so that is a big part of my work, is to come in and help expand and help um, people really stuck, and I like to call it the narcissistic bubble, to get outside of themselves and, and recognize and appreciate someone else's experience being different than their own. Right. It's not necessarily gaslighting. These people aren't coming in to intentionally harm their partners. Sure. Uh, it's very, very rare, actually, that I see someone that is in a partnership where someone is trying to really do emotional damage to that person. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if you can, without breaching confidentiality and with covering up the identity of the person, can you share with us uh, some facts from maybe one of the most difficult cases that you have dealt with? Uh, I mean, ethically, I can't get into too many specifics because I wouldn't want to in any way compromise or mm -hmm. reveal someone, but I have seen the damage it has done to individuals and to families when people are, you know, repeat offenders persistently using gaslighting. On children, I've seen it really break down their sense of self, their ability to trust themselves and thrive. And same with partners. Yeah. Right? It really does break the person down uh, to the point that they don't trust themselves, they don't recognize themselves, they don't know who they are anymore. And it's extremely harmful. Uh, and, you know, obviously in child development, it's extremely harmful. Sure. So um, some of the more extreme cases have been just that. Mm -hmm. Adult children of parents who gaslit them their entire life, yeah. for example. Um, I've seen partnerships with um, one partner just feels completely hopeless and 
You know, I've seen cases of wondering why they're even living because they're just so terrible with the narrative that they're getting on a daily basis, yeah. right? So it's extremely harmful and I've seen extreme cases, but it's not as common as we'd like to think, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's a bit of the danger with misusing the term. Sure. And so do any of these cases get as bad as, as this mid 20th century movie Gaslight? Does it that where the person is going out of their mind because they're being they're being tortured? Right. I, I haven't seen anything that extreme, obviously. Right. Right. But I have seen cases where um, people are just completely broken down. Their spirit is completely broken and their whole sense of self is shot. And uh, essentially what's happening in that movie, uh, I think the point behind that was to get the the wife committed. Get her committed so yeah. the, the, the man could take her estate and all of her money. In, in most right. cases, I don't see someone wanting to get someone committed. They just want to have complete control and power over them. You know, if I can break down how you see yourself and your world and your reality, then I can inject mine in there. And I have complete control over how you see yourself, the world around you, how you see me. And that's the point, and it's extremely harmful. Great, very valuable uh, information that you've shared with us. Um, where can people find you? I am online. I am here in the Los Angeles area, but you can jump on my website. It's christinalindsay.com. And I'm happy to help anyone who has further questions and find them referrals or resources if I can't help them. Great, super having you on Thank today. Thank you, thanks so much. I like closing out each segment with a song choice. One that refers to time well spent or time squandered or a song choice that causes a victim to emerge victoriously and resolve not to waste any more time on their toxic relationship. The latter is considered a recovery song. See if today's choice has meaning to you as you work to overcome the mental abuse you may have endured at the hands of a gaslighter. I've chosen lyrics from Madonna's You'll See. Consider the words I've taken from it. They seem to suggest the person that the singer is referring to is a gaslighter. One line that sticks out, you think I have nothing without you by my side. Not anymore, according to the rest of the lyrics. If you're looking to spend some time wisely, sing this entire song, loudly. It's all about resolving to spend time rebuilding your own self-esteem.